All right, so we're gonna do the deck profile for Black War Greymon. This is the deck that we ran in the uh, Top Cut Regionals. It was on June 4th, which is today. So um, we didn't do as well as I had hoped. We went, we went what, two and three? Um, but the testing of the deck, I think, went really well, and we're kind of still learning the lines of play, which is always super important. So let's go ahead and start off with the babies. Uh, it should be pretty obvious. We are running four... Of the Koromon, if you wanted to run a fifth baby, you could put the Gurimon in here. It would literally serve the exact same purpose. I just don't run it, just because. Um, so, yeah. So, we run four Koromon. Um, he's great. You know, if you swing with an Omni or Digimon with Greymon in the name, you draw a card. The deck is full of Greymons, so you're always drawing cards. Um, then we have our uh, rookies. So, we have... To Agumon, uh, this Agumon, I think you, these, this slot is a flex spot. I think you can do whatever you want with it. I think if you want to put the Agu that searches for the top three cards of the deck and lets you add an Agumon and a, um, an Agumon and a, or a Tamer, I think you could use that instead. You could use the Agumon that gives you 2k when you attack a player. You have a lot of options. So I don't think you need to use this one. I just do because that extra 1k sometimes matters. Um, having Black or Gray be at 13 so he can swing over other Megas is helpful. Uh, Dan, we lost the last game, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so we went ahead and dropped. Um, our next set of rookies here, we have four of the uh, promo Agumon. This dude is... You have to run this in the deck. If you're running a red base, you I don't think you cannot run this card. So he gives plus 2k DP to any Digimon with Greymon in his name. So guess what? Your Black or Greymon has 14k DP. And if you have the Metal Gray under it, you can swing over other stuff. And you're killing anything that's not Omnimon or Susanomon. So you got to run these guys. If you're running a Black Bait or a Red Base, required. Next, we're running four of the original Searcher or Agu from BT5. Um, he's good just because he's a Searcher. He's not as good as Black Agu, in my opinion, in terms of searching. Uh, he only hits... Omnimons or Greymons, and the only search is top three. But the more search you have in this deck, the better, because it's just so important to get all the different Greymons you have with all your different inheritables to use as necessary. Next, we have four Black Agus, the new one. Um, I honestly think this is like one of the best rookies in the deck, especially when you use it with Nokia. Um, reveal top four gives you a Dragonkin and a Greymon. So oftentimes, you get your level six and you get. Anything else that's a Greymon, or you can grab your Cyclone Mon, which is a level 4, because it's Dragonkin. So he hits damn near every single card in the deck. Um, sometimes you hit two cards, sometimes you hit one. Obviously, he doesn't hit Agumons, but everything else you can get, which is great and pretty much a necessity. Um, and what you really want to do is play this off of Nokia's. Hard playing it is fine, but if you can do it off of Nokia, it's just so much more value. Digivolving in the back, if you need to draw, is fine. Just make sure you have a Cyclone Mon or a Greymon in your hand so that you can Digivolve. So that is it for our rookies. We run, what is that, 4, 8, 12, 14 of these guys. Uh, next, we have our four Cyclone Mons. Um, I think really good card here. Uh, I know some people don't like to run it. I personally think he's awesome. Just because he's a Dragonkin, he's a red-black card, so he's going to give you access to your black options if you run any, and he's going to give you access to Dark Gaia Force, which is a must. So he's here, and then his Inheritable, he lets you pop 2k or less, which is great for some of these Jogress decks where you need to get rid of, like, armor. So you got to get rid of the bait. You got to get rid of the V-Mons. Um, he'll let your Black or Greymon restand. So he, he's pretty nice, um, I think. I wouldn't run this deck without him, but I know people who do. Next, we have only three of this Greymon. Um, so he's pretty nice because when you evolve on top of an Agumon, he gives you memory back. So if you have a Nokia out, you can get him out for essentially free, which is great. And he gives an extra 2k DP to your Greymons, which you want for Black or Greymon, so that you can, again, you just swing over anything and kill it, which is imperative for the deck. Then you have three of the Sec Plus One started at Greymon. Um, he gives you an extra check. I, I think if you don't want to run him, you want to put in like things like Geo Greymon, which is something that Dan uh, puts in his deck. Um, I don't know if it's in place of this, who it's in place of, but you could because Geo Greymon is nice. He'll come out 4K. He'll he'll kill things 4K or less. So you can get rid of the V Mons, the X V Mons, the Sting Mons, the annoying little shits. You can get rid of them. So he's great, and he'll let you Jogress into Chimera. But for me, I always want to have at least the option to get extra checks. 
um, because there are a lot of really cool things you can do with Chimera Mon in this card. You could get all three of them under one Black or Gray Mon, under one War Gray Mon, swing for like five checks. A lot of cool stuff you can do. It's not the main thrust of the deck, but it's an option. I swap Geos for Cyclone Mon. Okay, so Dan runs this without Cyclone Mons. He uses the Geo Grays, which again, I, I personally think Cyclone Mon is a must, but it all depends on your play style, what you want to do, because his his build is different than ours. Um, so, and who knows, at some point we'll probably get a matchup um, for them. But Geo Gray is a good option if you either don't have some of the stuff or you just want to do something different. Geo Gray is really cool because he comes out of security, gives you an extra body, and it can just mean so much in, in different matchups. Oh, wait, sorry. And then our last level four is we have two Greymon. Now, this Greymon, I don't think you need him. If you wanted to go four and four, which is what my deck used to be, you could. But I like the option of having a blocker in the deck because you never know. And as some of the matches you guys saw in the tournament today, me having blocker saved my ass. Because you can get blocker under your Black War Greymon, block, restand. It's awesome. Um, I only run him at two. Uh, I wouldn't run four unless you're trying to go for more of a black base. He's also really cool because he can Digivolve on top of your black Agumon. So you now have six cards that can go on top of black Agu, which is great. Um, you can also, of course, suspend Nokia to reduce the cost. You can't do that with Cyclone Mon, just a reminder. So I personally think having at least two of these guys is a good call because you never know when you'll need the blocker. And with Chimera Mon, you can put this under your Chimera Mon and give it blocker if you need it to. So again, there are some, some options there and why I think people struggle building this deck because it is not, I just realized guys, I'm sorry that for the stream that this shit is backwards. Um, I'm not gonna fix it and re-record this video. Uh, sorry, YouTube, but I am gonna fix it right now. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, um, Let's go ahead and look at our level fives. So we have four of the new Metal Greymon. You must put this in the deck. Point Blank Period. You must have this brother in the deck. Um, he's a four cost Evo, which I know is a little steep, but on Digivolution, you Digivolve something by one, then kill something three care less. Also, his Inheritable is amazing. It's basically Judgment of the Blade for uh, Machine Digimon and uh, Dragonkin. You'll be using this a lot. It's very helpful and an easy way to gain advantage. If you need to Digivolve in the back, do not hesitate to do it because what is more valuable is this Inheritable than his actual effect. Also, in set 9, just keep this in mind, you'll want these because Deltamon should be dropping as a promo, I believe, and he'll reduce the cost of this guy by 2. So, just saying, this deck next format is really good as well. So, if you have the cards, I would keep them. Because next format, this deck will be even better. Just saying. Um, next, we run two Altarius modes. Altarius mode is here because he gives plus 2k DP. And then if you go into the Metal Greymon and you couldn't kill what you needed to kill because it's 4k, you can Digivolve for one until Altarius and then kill whatever it is. Um, Altarius mode, I think, is awesome. Um, the only reason he's at two and not like four and four is because I run... Um, these guys here so i want to make sure that i can digivolve on top of this Greymon as much as possible because there are times where you're like oh crap i have this black level four but i can't go into anything on top of it so that's why i kind of do it this way and then i run two metal Greymon. this metal Greymon, the piercing effect isn't something you'll probably use often what i like him for is two things one he can go on top of red or black so he can go on top of the other Greymons. Two, when you swing, he can delete Digimon 4K or less when you swing at a player. So that's great for killing all the little Digimon that you will run into, I feel like, in this format because people are trying to jogress. He's great for that. On top of that, if you can get yourself, well, not this Agumon, but the other Agumon that gives you 2K underneath, he'll swing into the security at 9K, which is, generally speaking, pretty safe. Um, so that's why he's here. I think he's a really good option to put in the deck. If you wanted to go 4 and 4, you could. If you wanted to change this out for a different level 5, you could. Um, but that's what I found works best for me. Then lastly, we only run one Chimera Mon. Think if you want to run two, you could. Dan, I thought you ran more than one. Let me know. I'm curious. Um, Chimera Mon is amazing just because you can do all kinds of wacky stuff. 
by having your Agumon go into a Greymon, then have your other Agumon go into another Greymon, go into this guy, pull one of these guys from trash, pull any level four or three for that matter from trash in order to build this crazy stack. Um, also, his ability to neg things up to 3k because of the color, I think is is great. Um, again, especially against armors. Um, two Kimaramon, two EX1 metal, four BTA metal. Got you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think... I, I think if you want to run two Chimera and get rid of Altarius altogether, that is, I think, a viable option as well, right? It all comes down to, you know, what matchups you expect to see and just consistency. Chimera is great at two, I think, if you're going to do what Dan's doing, which is running the Geo Greymons, because then you can take advantage of that more often. I usually cheat out Chimeras by using Nokia. So I'll play it... I'll have a... Greymon in the back, I'll play a Nokia, then I'll play, it doesn't matter, I'll play one of these Agumons with Nokia, right? Then I'll suspend the Nokia to Digivolve into this Greymon, because then he's basically free, um, and then I'll go into Chimeramon, and then I can go into Black or Gray. So, there's a lot of weird, crazy stuff you can do by taking advantage of playing around with Chimeramon. Um, so, that's just food for thought. Next, we'll go into our level sixes. Uh, these are pretty straightforward. We have four of the amazing new Black War Greymon. I don't think this brother needs any sort of introduction. Um, we almost have all art arts, which is really cool. Um, so on Digivolve, if you have red eh, Digimon in your source, you can pop Digimon six play costs or less, or rather that total up to six. So you can get rid of two level threes, or not level three, sorry, two three play costs you can get rid of all kinds of stuff um then you have the ability to pop tamers if you have black digimon in your source you can pop tamers up to a total cost of six so when you're playing that yellow hybrid shit you can get rid of two cody's which is beautiful you can get rid of um tk's all kinds of stuff so like black or greymon is another essential option just because he can get rid of all the threats that your opponent has on the board and you can be very 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 controlly also, when a Digimon is deleted, he restands. That's where this guy comes in. You swing, you restand, you swing at something else. Um, the restand is once per turn, but it's on all turns. So even if your opponent swings into your security, their Digimon dies, guess what? You restand. Or you have blocker, you block, you restand, giving you two blocks in a turn. A lot of options. Um, that's why I feel like this is one of the hardest decks to build this format. So many viable options, they are all equally good. But yes, exactly. This deck, I honestly, and I will stand by this, I do think that Black or Greymon is a tier one deck. The issue is it's hard to build because you have so many options and they all seem really good and it's really going to depend on your play style and what you run into. Um, the nice thing about Black or Greymon, I don't think there's any deck currently, in my opinion, that completely shits on Black or Greymon. Um, I don't think there's a deck that's like you play it and you're automatically going to lose. It's really kind of a mix of things, which I think is where people are really hesitant about this deck. The last level six that we run is War Greymon from BT1. This dude is awesome. Um, security control is making a comeback. Um, so you want him point blank period. He can swing and he doesn't care about options. You can power him up. You can even get five checks off with this man. So let me show y'all what that stack looks like because I'm sure you're like, wait, what? So you have your Chimeramon here. And earlier in one of the games today, we had him at like, we could have got him to five. I just didn't do it because I needed a blocker instead. So you get your Chimeramon. You go Greymon, Greymon. Doesn't matter which Agu you have. Ideally, you want these two, right? So you go Greymon, Greymon, you have them both out, you Jogress, so that's already plus two checks in this stack, go to Chimera, with Chimera's effect, you grab, where is it, you grab the other Greymon, so that's already plus three checks, and then, again, this is all assuming you have the memory, by this point in the game, you probably do, you either have Marcus out, or you have enough Nokias to do this, you just go into War Greymon. This War Greymon now has 11, 13, 15k, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 checks, and he doesn't activate options. And then if you have Blitz Omni, you win the game. So that's that's a thing you can do, and I'm honestly thinking about building a deck that's centered around this premise and see what happens. I don't expect it to be really good. I expect it to be very um, high-rolly, like Jessmon, but like on paper and in theory, it's really cool. 
it's not something you're going to do often, but it is something that's doable. Um, so just food for thought, when you're thinking about your Chimeramon stacks, you can do all kinds of wacky shit like this. Or, I mean, you could even just put Black War Greymon and you'll have four checks, which is still deadly at 16k. Yes, options will be activated, but if you're playing against a deck where that's not a concern, who gives a damn, right? So just uh, food for thought when you're building this deck, um, that there's all kinds of wild inheritable stuff that the Greymon lines give you and that you can take advantage of. Okay, so our last uh, Digimon here is an Omnimon. I don't know. I don't think you need this guy. I run him just because of the blitz factor and the fact that you could possibly win the game just by getting him out. Now, he's also really good for avoiding things like the Mastemon combo with Chaos Mon and the DNA uh, Mastemon because he's level 7. So they're not popping him. So that's cool. Um, but I really don't know if he'll stay in the deck personally. Um, I think you could change him out for whatever. You could change him out to make space for things. He's very flexible, I think. Um, however, there have also been moments where I thought about taking him out for X antibody. Um, because with X antibody, I can discharge sources to stop attacks. I can swing with him to kill other Digimon. I can use Nokia's to reduce the cost to make him three or even two if I have all four. So there are options with this card. Um, you, you could really play around with that. All right, now let's get into our tamers. These are obvious for Nokia. I think you can't play this without four Nokia. I think you need the four. Don't run any less than four. You need to see her as much as possible, which is why I think it's a good idea to even put like Trident Revolvers so you can play her for free, technically. Um, it's a good idea to play shit like, um, uh, what's it called? Oh my God, I can't even think of what it's called right now. Oh, the, the Agu lets you search for uh, Tamers. There are a lot of really good options for this deck, but you need four Nokia. Next, I'm only running two Marcuses. Uh, if you wanted to, you could run Hero. Um, he's really good. If you wanted to, you could bump this up to three or four Marcuses um, because Marcus doubles as a memory setter and gives you memory when you swing with a Greymon. As you can see, this deck is all Greymon except for the Omni and the Cyclone Mons. Um, so there will be times where you have the three memory, but you want to go into your Metal Gray, you can literally swing, or sorry, with your Black or Gray, you can literally swing with Metal Gray, gain a memory, put yourself at four, and then if you have, you know, your buffs, you're probably fine, uh, and then go into Black or Gray for four, go to zero, kill something else with Black or Gray's effect. Like, you can do a lot of chaining between these two cards. In a game, usually, once you get to this board state, like just these two by themselves, you're probably fine for the rest of the game because now you can play Black War Greymons and it's still your turn, um, generally speaking. So if you can get a board that at least has these two out, you're probably sitting pretty the entire game. Um, also, I feel like with a lot of the, the stuff we run into today, people just keep giving us memory. And when that happens, again, you are in a really good space. Last, we're talking about options. These... You can run whatever you want. I mean, um, I think this this is... Well, we'll just get into them. So we have two Dark Gaia Force. Um, it's a really nice card. You can kill wide boards. Uh, 15 DP, fifteen play costs or less. You can kill Digimon 15 play costs or less. In security, you can kill one Digimon 15 play costs or less. Now, this card is cool. But there are times where I'm like, do I need it? And the reason why I say that is... Black War Greymon in and of himself with this Metal Greymon can wipe boards, right? Do I need to pay eight to wipe your board or should I run more Marcuses? Should I run the X Antibody? Should I run more Omnis? Should I run um, Trident Revolver? Should I run any of these other cards that are equally viable? When I know Black War Greymon with, coupled with Metal Greymon and a few other cards can wipe your board anyway, right? So I think that's a valid question and, and really something to figure out based on like your your meta and what you're playing um, and, and how often this card is as valuable as just saying, I'm just going to run over everything you got. I don't really care what's on your board. These are the questions.
Then the last card in the deck is Iron Fisted Onslaught. You don't need this to run this card. I do, because I love the idea of having two ways to clear a board. Iron Fisted Onslaught's nice because it kills all of your high play cost Digimon, so you can get rid of, uh, you know, two level sixes that are the same cost or whatever. Um, the only issue with this is I have to basically be in Cyclone Mon, Metal Grey Mon, one of these other cards. I don't have like a, a standard black card that just is just gonna sit out. So you have again, you have options. This deck is super versatile. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and say this is the best way to build it. You, if you don't build it this way, you're gonna lose. Um, this is just one way to build it. I'm curious to see what other builds you guys are going to be running of, of this. Um, for those of y'all on YouTube, let me know in the comment section below. For those of you guys here on Twitch, we can talk about it right now. But for my YouTube folks, I will see you in the next video. Peace.